talking about macadamia nuts before and how if you have a, a dry year, it could kill the tree because they're very delicate. How, for almond trees, can you be certain that they're going to grow? Like, is there ever a bad year that could kill the trees? Well, there's there's two. There, I think there's there's two parts of your in your okay. question there. One was about water, and the other one was about diseases. Okay. Yeah. So there's m huge multinational companies that are going to sell you stuff that is going to prevent you from killing your getting your trees yeah. killed by disease. You're more likely to lose the trees from some sort of genetic thing in the breeding of that particular variety. Okay. That, that that's then then having some pests come in and wipe you out. Right, it's probably not going to happen mm -hmm. because you have Bayer and BSF and all those all, all those people. Right. The other part of your question was water. Well, yeah, water's a big. Yeah, it's it's a it's a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, you you know almond trees you know almond trees need water. Yeah. they use about uh, three acre feet of water, which is kind of in the middle of the whole cycle of things. If you hay and mm -hmm. vegetables and that kind of thing use four, five, or six acre feet, and okay. some other things use less. Okay, so, so almonds are kind of in the middle. Interesting. One thing I'm curious about, just to give, I guess, the audience and everybody a idea of returns on this kind of thing. Today, apartment building returns or commercial returns can be anywhere between, I guess, three and a half percent to seven or eight uh, percent yield on the purchase of that kind of asset. How does almond farming in general and our almond trees, how does that compare? Well, if you look at the uh, same, tw you know, if you look at a 20 year track record, mm -hmm. you know, the CREF index or any of those index, and you look at farmland, farmland has about 11% return. Wow, okay. Which is just as good as stocks and bonds and, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. It, it just is right there. The great thing about that is back to the non correlated is, is that as those th other things, you know, you, you'd be able to get something that has that good a return is not correlated for your portfolio mm -hmm. it's a it's really it's really a good it's really a, a, a good good thing um the returns on uh the returns on our deals today we do the same as as many well we try to be very um conservative as our you know with it with the numbers as that we go we have about a 10 percent irr on them wow, today okay and uh we have in the low single digits mm -hmm. kind of kind of average return uh six seven eight percent return mm -hmm. you know depending upon the almond price right we particularly use a particularly low almond low almond price mm -hmm. we think with the constrained supply environment that yeah. we're going into with two-thirds of all the almonds grown today, mm -hmm. Eduardo, that are south where all this water issue is. Wow. Yes, it's where we think there could be a dramatic difference mm -hmm. in what we, what the almonds are worth. We think the our price that we use in, in our you know eighth, ninth, and tenth year, yeah. we think those prices are just really are right around the corner. Right. And that makes this, the these deals subs, you know substantially uh, substantially better but right. we have to take the price that we are today we put a nice low inflator on yeah. them and you know you know run them you know you know run them through but we really do have a very you know constrained environment right. and you know this constrained environment is I, I have to mention you know is 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 really has to do with the whole global situation right you know in 2050, we're supposed to have 10 billion people on the planet. And wow. what we don't understand is, is that between now and then, depending on who you want to look at, but we need like 50 or 60 percent more food production. Mm -hmm. But each, I don't even quote the quote how much land we're losing every day or hour or whatever because it's just it's just phenomenal but we're losing land uh, you know we're, we're losing farmland uh, we're losing the water you know we don't have the water to water it mm -hmm. so the interesting statistic is is that the amount of farmland per person right is going down dramatically and 
the yields over time are not going to make it. You know, are not are the, the the increased yield is not going to right. not going to compensate mm -hmm. for that. Right. So we're having this huge amount of people. You know, people that that need food, mm -hmm. and then from the developed world, we have all these people coming into the middle class. Right. Well, all these people in the middle class, this is this is what's really driving food prices. Right. Yeah. So this era of low food prices that we've that we've had for wherever, you know, forever is is rapidly coming to an end because there's millions and millions of people in China and there's millions yeah. and millions of people in India and around the world that are coming into the middle class that have more disposable income they're going to bid up the bid up the mm -hmm. bid up the cost bid up the bid up the cost of food right so just what's happened in the last year or two and it's just not having to do with supply issues. The cost of food is 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 is, ha is going up and has been going yeah. up. All you need to do is talk to the person in your family mm -hmm. that buys food and ask them: Do they think food is you know is going to get any cheaper? Yeah. And to a, I've never talked to anyone that doesn't say, well, oh my God, no, it's, it's mm -hmm. getting more expensive, you know, every day and has, you know, for a long time. Right. You know, as I asked my wife the other day, you know, the, the old Trader Joe's bag, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, our back in the day, the Trader Joe's bag was, you know, 10 or $15, then mm -hmm. it was $25. Yeah. And I asked her, if she'd get a Trader Joe's bag for $50. And she yeah. looked like, you know, like, well, you're just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. You know, lot, you just yeah. don't know what you're talking about. You know, well, it's just there's nothing in the bag. Yeah. So I think the context really has to be is is that this exactly what this happening in California, mm -hmm. uh, the constrained supply, losing you know losing far you know losing farmland, you know losing water is exactly what's happening across the globe. Yeah. And we have more people with more money bidding up the price of food. So that's the the. That's the environment that, that, that we're finding farmland. And that's why, you know, we have like the largest farmland owner, the just strictly farmland is Bill Gates. He owns mm -hmm. yeah. 245,000 acres of, of farmland. Yeah. Jeff Bezos, who's just, you know, really ramping up his money, his mm -hmm. money has 420,000 acres of, wow. okay. of, of land. Yeah. Um, this is, you know, this is what's this is what's happening. You know, Bill Gates looks all around the world and and understands that the the farmland is and food is going to be an important thing. This is what this is this is going to be an important issue as we go forward. Okay, that's very interesting. I mean, that's kind of one of the reasons I thought it would be really interesting to chat with you, just because, you know, I listen to other podcasts, I drive a lot, and. When I'm in the car, that's what I do, and I'm, I want to learn about what other people are doing. You know, real estate, in a way, I feel like has gotten very oversaturated with investors, and you really have to be creative in your approach to investing and finding where to, where to do deals, where to put your money, and it's important to diversify, and you have to have an edge. And so this is something that I started seeing, and it's interesting that there are a lot of trends going in its favor. Um, so yeah, I think it's interesting. Do you have a uh, do you have an investor profile of somebody that you like to work with that you bring as an investor? Is there somebody who shouldn't be investing in farmland? Well, I, I think the investor. Pro, I don't know who shouldn't be investing mm -hmm. in, in farmland. I think you know everybody needs probably a little. You know, it's good to have a little. But mm -hmm. I think the people who are interested in it, as we were talking before is this whole group of people who are interested in food who understand you know who understand food um i don't know if there's a a, a profile I, maybe i think the people who invest with me are the ones that are, are the ones that shop at the grocery store mm -hmm. yeah i have an investor who gives me every time i call him up he tells me what he is a one of those guys who can photographic mind or whatever mm -hmm. he tells me what the price of a bag of almonds is at costco yeah so I think a lot of people understand, you know, that you know understand the the price of food. But I think if you have, you know, especially today, I mean, today in stock market and you know today and the high asset prices today, I think my my I think um, uh, 
having something in your portfolio that is not correlated to the real estate or not correlated to the stocks and bonds mm -hmm. um, might you know might might be a good you know might be a good thing. Mm -hmm.